All right, so let's consider a simple system made of a duct closed on the right-hand side and excited on the left-hand side by a piston that oscillates at a velocity v. Um, and we suppose furthermore that we have a one-dimensional sound field so that the sound field, the value of the pressure, only depends on the uh, x-coordinates. We have the usual expression for the pressure field in the duct. And for the velocity, P plus over rho C exponential minus I kx minus p minus over rho c exponential plus i kx. Well, the only thing we know about the duct is its length, l, and the velocity uh, of the piston, so the oscillation velocity of the piston. How can we find the value of p plus and p minus? We just have to express two boundary conditions that the velocity at x equal to zero is equal to the velocity of the piston, meaning that the particle of air in contact with the piston move with the piston, so that we have p plus minus p minus over rho c is equal to v, and that the velocity at x equal l is equal to zero because we have assumed that we have a rigid termination here so that the particles cannot get in and out of the of the duct and this is equal to p plus over rho c exponential minus i k l where l is the length of the duct minus p minus over rho c exponential i k l but this constitutes a system of equation for p plus and p minus that we can simplify as follow. We have p plus minus p minus is equal to rho c v bar and we have p plus exponential minus i k l minus p minus exponential i k l is equal to zero. Um, we can solve this by substitution. The, the second relationship tells us that p minus is equal to p plus exponential minus 2 i k l so that p plus is equal to, uh, sorry, so that p plus times 1 minus exponential minus 2 i k l is equal to rho c v bar so that p plus is rho c v bar divided by 1 minus exponential minus 2 i k l or to simplify it you will see later why it's useful we can multiply above and below by exponential i k l to obtain rho c v bar exponential i k l over exponential i KL minus exponential minus IKL and this is equal to um, rho C V bar exponential I KL times cosine KL minus cosine KL sine KL plus so over 2 I sine KL and so that P minus is just equal to rho C V bar exponential minus I KL over 2 I sine. Now we can place these values of P plus and P minus in the expression for the pressure and obtain P is equal to uh, minus I rho C V bar divided by 2 sine KL times um, I have P plus so exponential I KL exponential minus I K X so it's exponential I K L minus X 
and uh, for p minus I have exponential minus ikl plus exponential minus i k l minus x which gives us finally that the pressure is equal to uh, minus i rho c v bar divided by sine k l times cosine k l minus x. What is interesting in this solution is that we have a, a modulation function that defines how the pressure varies in the tube and we have an amplitude that is proportional to the velocity of the piston, maximum velocity of the piston, proportional to the um, uh, to the uh, characteristic impedance of the media, but also we have a term sine k l here at the denominator, which can be zero. And when this is equal to zero, it means that the pressure goes to infinity. This happens so when sine k l is equal to zero, which means when k l is equal to n times pi, k is omega divided by c times l equal n pi and omega is 2 pi uh, f if I did by c times l is equal to n pi which means that this happens when the frequency is an integer number of times c divided by 2 l. Uh, we can also write this in a different way, write this as the, the infinite pressure happens when the length is equal to n times c divided by 2f, but c over f is lambda, so when the length is an integer number of half wavelengths. In this case, the sound pressure field is equal to infinity. We say that we have reached acoustic resonance of the duct.